the foundation of it is something which makes the consumer's life better. Mm -hmm. That really is the foundation. Okay. Can you offer a proposition which genuinely makes his or her life better? Mm -hmm. Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a vodcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing to it and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. Our episodes go live at 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. every day. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm privileged and delighted to welcome a very, very senior professional from the corporate world, Shantanu Khosla. Shantanu, welcome to the show. Morning, morning, Ashutosh. Wonderful to be here. Yeah. Thank you. Shantanu is the Managing Director of Crompton Greaves Electricals Limited. He is the former Managing Director and CEO of Procter & Gamble India. So Shantanu, talking about the incredibly long and wonderful experience you had in, with FMZ, FMCG, tell me what goes into building a successful FMCG brand. There, there are a few things, but... Uh... The foundation of it is something which makes the consumer's life better. Mm -hmm. That really is the foundation. Okay. Can you offer a proposition which genuinely makes his or her life better? Mm -hmm. If you have that, mm -hmm. then you need to move on to the other requirements, if you will. Mm -hmm. obviously you have to have the innovation capability to deliver against the proposition mm -hmm. yeah. you can't really fool the consumer in Absolutely. the long term if you're going to build a brand yes. right? so you have to have the innovation that supports the proposition mm -hmm. once you've got these two things you now have to have the ability to invest in letting the consumer know about it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not much point in having this fantastic proposition, but no one knows about it. Correct. Said another way, you have to invest in creating awareness and trial. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of the day, brands are also businesses, mm -hmm. right? So once you've got these three, it is also important to have a cost structure mm -hmm. which allows you to make the investments in building the brand and the innovation, but nonetheless enables you to charge a price which is seen by the consumer as a good value. Mm -hmm. you know, in today's world, for example, in the work I do, there's not much point my developing the best fan proposition you can imagine, but then trying to charge a hundred thousand rupees for it. Right. I'm not really going to make much. So you have to have that cost structure to enable those investments. Mm. Finally, when you've got all this, mm. you need to have some operational capabilities. Mm. Said another way, you need to be able to deliver this product with an efficient supply chain that gets your brand available wherever and whenever the consumer wants to shop. Mm. So it starts with making her his or her life better, the innovation which enables it, a cost structure which enables you to price at good value, mm. and finally, an ability to get the product in the hands of the consumer. So it's not it's not complicated. Correct. It's not complicated. But Correct. these are the things which need to be done Correct. consistently over time. Absolutely. Well said. Very, very well said. I think this is something you articulated so well uh, for, for the people who are going to be listening to us. I think there's some great, great inputs. So tell me, you know, for so many years in an FMCG brand and then into a consumer durable brand, 
how was your transition and do these four lessons hold for consumer durables as well in my opinion these four lessons steps conditions whatever you want to call them hold for everything okay they're universal the way they get applied in practice may differ mm-hmm. based on the category the service or the brand which you are offering mm. but it doesn't matter you know you are in the airline business you are in the finance business you got to do this anything which is consumer facing requires these conditions mm. so the fundamentals didn't change at all mm. okay and and how was your transition from uh... an fmcg business in png which was very very high throughput to a consumer durable brand which is more expensive probably a lower throughput from a business and brand point of view mm-hmm. yes i had to obviously uh, spend and invest time in listening to people and learning about unique dynamics of this category and mm-hmm. every category has unique dynamics sure. on a very simple level when you're selling consumer durables there is an arm which is called service mm-hmm. warranty mm-hmm. these are things which are absolutely critical in the consumer durable industry because they are also key touch points to the consumer however these don't exist in fmcg so you have to learn those things which are specific but more than the business or the brands because ultimately they're all consumer facing it's more a difference in understanding the organization the culture of the organization the capabilities of the organization because those can differ significantly i moved from an organization which has a huge history of uh, recruiting the best developing them fantastic systems in many ways state of the art in terms of people and people development and coaching to an organization which was far more if you will traditional mm-hmm. far more based on individuals and personality mm. right so how you get a different type of organization to perform again as a high performing organization mm-hmm. was really the biggest change or where i had to in a sense again principles don't change that much but where i had to learn more and accordingly adapt tactics you know simple things like in png data for everything was available the processes were always here here you had to begin to develop first the systems and then the culture mm. to get more data based right. in terms of the decision making mm. very interesting so coming back to brands chance uh, you know brands my own experience are living beings you know you got to keep on investing in them over and over again how can they stay relevant for a long time and some of the brands that you have worked with Uh, in PNG, have been there in existence for God knows how many decades. Uh, three things. One, and that's a a mindset thing. Mm-hmm. Never get arrogant. Never think the world is going to not change. Mm-hmm. never think because you succeeded yesterday you have a divine right to succeed always feel that you are in launch phase correct right so that's kind of a mm. state of mind uh, framework specific things be closer to the consumer than anyone else make it a real and living thing mm. bring the consumer into mm. your company mm. number 2 innovation if you don't innovate 
you will become a commodity and that is the first step toward death of a brand mm. how you innovate and what you innovate on is driven by the fact that you are close to the consumer mm. you keep doing that and you have the right mindset and you can exist forever and ever mm. there are too many cases if you look at uh, history of businesses and brands of people worrying that if i do something and innovate what will happen to my current business mm-hmm. that in my opinion is the most fallacious thinking because if you don't do it someone else is going to come and do it to you correct correct well said and yet there is some interesting changes or, or, or shifts taking place in, in the branding world one with the digital uh, community coming in and the second is e-commerce so uh, i wanted to ask you how are brands especially traditional brands coping with the onset of the digital uh, divide or digital world okay uh, i my generation has a possible advantage of a slightly longer term perspective on this mm-hmm. when i started working as a brand manager in india there was no television correct okay we built our brands using a primary vehicle of cinema advertising true without computers we used to make our cinema plans on large sheets of paper a pencil and a razor and a calculator correct okay these same questions were asked when cinema died and tv came on mm-hmm. the same questions were asked when we moved from national network television with three programs chaya geet ma bharat and uh, hindi feature film on yeah, sunday hindi, yeah to 300 to 500 channels with extreme fragmented viewership mm-hmm. so obviously with time and technology the media environment becomes far more fragmented mm-hmm. far more complex and the demands on people's time and therefore their attention span reduces mm-hmm. this is not necessarily new okay people a hundred years ago had the time to sit and read a 500 page charles dickens book today they don't they don't true right they they see a 5 second clip mm. on their phone mm. there is one fundamental change which is happening mm-hmm. because of the change of media vehicles mm-hmm. and that is the critical change i think which marketers need to understand mm-hmm. adapt to and build into their thinking mm mm-hmm. the big change is actually in my opinion not something called digital mm-hmm. because you know i said this before to people as far as i know my television is digital mm-hmm. okay the really big change in terms of consumer behavior mm-hmm. is that the communication has become two way mm-hmm. in the past the communication was only one way correct and therefore the communication did not spiral out into networks 
And therefore, as the communicator, you had complete control of your message. Mm -hmm. Now what has happened is the communication has, because of the technology, become two-way. Two-way which spirals into networks. Mm. Therefore, you as a communicator, as the originator of the communication, do not have full control. In fact, with time, less and less control over what your message is. Correct. That is the fundamental change in behavior, which marketeers need to understand. So it is not a simple matter of treating YouTube as I'll take my television ad and I'll slap it on YouTube. Correct. That's not really got anything to do with anything as different from instead of buying a spot on Doordarshan, let me buy a spot on cricket. Mm. Right? It is, and the best marketeers now and in the future understand that they're letting go of control of their communication mm -hmm. design their communication accordingly mm -hmm. and become participative in that conversation to guide that conversation as it develops okay that builds trust okay that builds consumer confidence mm -hmm. In many ways, what has happened is uh, there always mm -hmm. used to be a marketing channel, mm -hmm. a touch point, mm -hmm. even in the old days, which we used to call word of mouth, mm -hmm. which was a very powerful one, but it was basically unquantifiable. Mm -hmm. It was hard to get a handle, mm -hmm. but it was the most trustworthy and most influential touch point. Okay. I tell my friend this, I ask my friend, he tells me this, yeah. what should you buy? All word of mouth. Mm. That is now, that conversation has now multiplied many fold because of the technology. Mm. And that is what marketeers have to learn and build the capability to be a part of, as opposed to, I make a communication, I throw it out there, and let's see what happens. Fascinating. My follow-up question to you there for Shantanu is that, you know, you have worked with many, many, many generations of people over the last 35, 40 years. Um, what is your view on how millennials and the Gen Z are handling brands today? Are they as loyal as the earlier generation used to be? You mean as loyal as, the, Custom. as, as consumers? Custom. Yeah. As consumers. Yeah. See, first, you know, let's get some benchmarks on loyalty, mm -hmm. right? And I'm going back to old data. So the data may not still be there. Mm -hmm. But in laundry, for example, we used to define a loyal user as someone who uses more than 50% of share of requirements is my brand. Okay. That is only half the time in any case using my brand that I'm calling a loyal. True. Now, this varies by category. If you move to sanitary napkins, this goes up to 70-75%. Okay. So, consumers were always switching, mm -hmm. but they had one preferred brand. Okay. Because of the availability and the affordability, the range of options to people today mm -hmm millennials or not, has significantly increased. Okay. So the pressure on the leading brand 
to stay more relevant, to stay more in touch with these consumers mm. is increasing. Because, it's, you know, if I go back when I started working uh, in India, there were two shampoos available. Yeah. Tata shampoo and uh, Halo shampoo from mm. Colgate. And that was it. Mm. Right? Okay. So, you need to stay much more relevant all the time. And the cycle and the pace of change has increased. Mm. If you can do that, you have every right mm. to retain loyalty. Okay. If you think about it, and I'm talking about now F, the large FMCG categories. Mm. The leading toothpaste has been the leading toothpaste in India for ever since I was a child. Absolutely. The leading soaps have been the leading soaps. Mm. Clinic has been the leading shampoo. Correct. Right? Now, they are the leading folks because they're doing their job right. Mm. They wouldn't be otherwise. So. Right? Okay. So, yes, it becomes more challenging because of cycle times are shorter mm -hmm. because the information of options is available much more and frankly the affordability has gone up in general terms mm -hmm. so it makes a challenge on the market here more mm -hmm. but does that mean it's a given you can't achieve the kinds of loyalties that uh, you could in the past no i don't think so at all okay okay so shantanu i've got now time for a few questions for you personally yeah uh, so uh, my first question to you is that for someone who has spent so much time and especially led large organizations, what would you say is your leadership style? First and most important, mm -hmm. it's all about the people. Correct. Nothing else matters. Okay. Ultimately, the quality of the people make the difference. Mm. So everything about me and the way I have uh, typically lived my professional life is how do I maximize the development of the people as individuals and as a collective whole? Mm. I believe that if you can do that, Everything else will take care of itself. Mm. I have tried to follow one underlying principle, mm -hmm. which obviously over the years I have been, I articulate in a certain fashion, but obviously it didn't start like that. And the way I articulate is delegate everything except accountability. Okay. You are still accountable. But your job is not to do his or her job. Mm -hmm. Your job is to enable him or her to do the best job she can. This requires trust. Mm -hmm. Because you have kept the accountability. So if that job is not done, it's still your problem. Correct. So it requires trust. And it requires a commitment, a complete wholehearted commitment to help that person be the best professional they can be. You do that, you don't have to bother about anything else. Well said. Well said. And my last question to you now, and this is for the thousands of young people who will be listening to our conversation and everything that you're saying. What would your advice be to a young individual who's starting off on her or his career in the corporate world? Two things. Hmm. The, you see, everyone wants to achieve success, sure. however they define it. Monetary success, social success, whatever. Correct. Yeah. But everyone is, wants it, I believe. Hmm. 
I have never seen anyone achieve success who is not fundamentally enjoying what they're doing. Absolutely. So, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, you're not going to achieve success, monetary or otherwise. So, find something you enjoy doing or find out, fi figure out a way to enjoy what you're doing now. Hmm. First. Second. In organizations, people spend a huge amount of time, get a lot of anxiety and stress built up inside themselves, trying to figure out what they need to do to get promoted. How, what do I need to do? The whole fixation, yeah. And, and I, that's linked, I guess, to, you know, I want to succeed. Mm. Now, the reality is many things are involved in an individual's career progress. Mm. Some of them within the individual's control, some of them outside the individual's control. Correct. Right? My advice is focus on what is in your control. Mm. There's nothing you can do. If your company buys out another company and that creates an opportunity. Mm. Or your company is bought out and your job is eliminated. There's nothing you can do. Absolutely right. Now, what is in your control? Mm. One thing. Do a fantastic job in whatever your current job is. Very well said. You do that and you have maximized the chances of getting an outcome which you want. Very nice. Everything else doesn't affect the outcome, but people think it affects the outcome. True. And they take unnecessary stress and waste their time on that. So these two things, have fun in what you're doing. And focus on doing a great job in whatever your current assignment is. Very, well. Very well said. Chantanu, thank you so much. It has been such a pleasure speaking to you. I think I have learned, despite being in marketing, learned so many new things from you. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of young people will love to listen to everything that you've said. Thank you again and good luck with everything that you're doing. Thank you, Ashish. Take care, stay safe and healthy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for listening to The Brand Called You videocast and podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for The Brand Called You.